Namaste. Hi. The Baddha Padmasana, or the Binding Lotus Position, is a powerful physical technique for increasing the energy levels in the Manipura Chakra, where generally, commonly, the absorption there is low, because we're utilizing you know, most of our energy there for, for digestion, nutrient absorption, you know, elimination, the functions of the body in general. And then by increasing the digestive fire you know, flowing through that region, we also pave way for the purification of the nadis, particularly the ida, the left, and the pingala and the right channels. And this paves way for yeah, the opening and the awakening, yeah, so to speak, of the shushumna nadi. Unless these two sides are balanced and open, the shushumna nadi won't open as well. All right, so the reason being in the Badabad Masana, we're using actually, aside from the binding legs, the pressure coming from the heels yeah, and leaning forward, and the heel yeah, yeah, irrigates and then uh, presses and massages the nerve clusters and the organs located in the core region. All right, so the Padabad, Padapadmasana is. An advanced one, yeah. If the Padmasana, this one is already advanced, yeah. The Bada Padmasana is even yeah more challenging. So you need to learn this first and to be able to sustain this without uh, experiencing yeah pressure and pain, the knee, and the lower back in general. All right. The Bada Padmasana is we're binding our arms behind us. All right. So the top leg will go first, yeah. And then grabbing hold of that foot, see? Yeah, it has to be a firm grip. And then you might lightly flex your toes to create stability. And a mild twist towards yeah, that opposite side so you can yeah, move the spine around as well as the joints yeah, surrounding yeah, your shoulders and your hips. And then from there, the other arm follows. Breathing in, yeah, you might roll this arm around a few times and out the back. All right. Yeah, it's the same uh, amount of pressure or uh, grit and intensity. All right, and if you notice, yeah, so the knees would have to move to the midline. That's very important for stability of your sacralumbar spine. Yeah, so they don't open wide. All right, and then make sure that the heel is not pressing against the bone of the ribs, rather towards yeah, the fleshy part of the lower abdomen region. And then the top heel now, yeah, will rest there, and then you might lightly adjust. Sometimes I will lean to the side so I can open the spine, and up to the center, and the other side. Now breathing in, chest opens. Good. Exhale, loosen. Now, every time you attempt to go forward or lower, inhale to lengthen the spine. And exhale, down. All right. Until such time, yeah, that, let me just adjust backwards so you can still see me. Because the moment I place my head on the ground, my angle is short of the camera. Yeah. Inhaling. And exhaling, inhale, open, exhale, loosen. All right, and in here you will already feel the pressure. All right. You might lightly rub the heel there, side to side, and until such time that you can yeah, beautifully and comfortably and lightly yeah, lower your head down the floor. Good. And then here you may rub the shoulders around, and then you may move your hips backwards and then just staying here good allowing the pressure coming from the heel to massage that part of your body good keep the shoulders moving away from the rest of your upper back yeah sometimes you may rub the shoulders around to create more space so you can move the spine away from the shoulders and then activate the shoulders slightly by lifting them up towards the back plane, up and towards the back. Yeah. And settle. And here, breathe so mindfully that you can feel the pressure of the breath intensify the level of massage and pressure 
you experience in that point. And exhale out. Breathing in. You might hold the gentle come back at the top. Exhale, easy. All right. And then we try to gaze towards the eyebrow center. Yeah, with your eyes closed like a gentle Shambhavi Mudra. Yeah, or you can lift forward and then lightly gaze to the front, yeah, between the eyebrows. Yeah, but don't strain the neck. It's more of yeah, a gentle neck lift. All right, to come up. Yeah, breathing in, forward. Exhale to settle. Good. And then you can reposition your hips. All right. Sometimes I would lean towards the top knee. Yeah. And I will turn the spine to that direction. And the head falls to that direction. This feels really good for yeah, the opposite side of the body. And then up. Good. And center. Of course. And then unbind. Exhale. And then release the legs. And then you may give your legs some light shaking and flipping around. All right. A combination I do after the Vadapud Masana is the Kandasana. And so from there, now we we'll just loosen a bit like that and circle around. Or sometimes I will flow and just shake the legs out. Good. And I will try to practice the Kandasana, because the Kandasana, you know what it does, yeah, it further opens yeah, the hip region, yeah. not open, loosen, but open the inner linings of the hips, yeah. so I can pave way for um, more energy flowing from the Kandanadi, which includes the bottom regions or bottom uh, nerve clusters, the Muladhara Chakra, yeah, the Shadishtana, yeah, the Kandanadi encompasses the whole of the pelvic cavity. Good. And breathing here. Good. To release, and breathing in, exhale out, Good. cross the legs. Give him a light shake, a bit of a side to side. And then commonly what I do after the Kandasana is I will lie down on my back. And I will do a bit of up and down motion and a few of this and just to relax that lower spine. And I will do the knee swinging up to the chest. And I will, I will rub that side you know, to release pressure coming from yeah, the deep rotation, yeah, to open a little bit more, right, the inner linings of the hips. And, and sometimes I would do a side stretch there, and then the opposite one, and then I'm out up and down motion. And after this, and my sequence is actually this, yet yeah, I'm sharing it with you. I'm going to lift up yeah. to the Viparita Karani. Yeah. I'm actually practicing. I just thought of sharing with you tips about this deep meditative aspect of uh, asana practice. Yeah, magnetizing the optic nerves there between the eyebrows. Navu mudra to seal the tongue in the heart palate. Good. And I knew I practice as well. Yeah, a couple of breaths in the yeah, halasana and just to loosen. Yeah, you can cross over. Yeah, to balance yeah, the length and the space inside the hips. Right. And then from there, I try to roll down the spine. Right. Careful as you go. Right. Bend the knees and circle around. Good. And yeah, I do the flow again. And I will repeat the sequence to the other side. So I'll do that actually. Yep. <laughs> Bending. 
Uh, it's the side of me now, and this is my tight side. Around in a gentle twist. Uh, some not like releasing exercises there. Good. But of course, aside from the physical techniques, the asana, uh, the breath, pranayama is more important you know, or as important. It's as powerful as the physical technique because when you work on the breath, you know, especially with the kumbhaka, you know, you're allowing you know, the, the pressure of the breath to go towards those deep inner pockets yeah, asanas are not able to gain access to. Yeah, only the breath can. Yeah. Yeah, same. Yeah, you might lightly lean to that side and that chest. Breathing in. Breathing out. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, soften. Inhale, open. Exhale, folding. Breathing in. And exhale all the way down. Good. <laughs> My microphone is sliding up. Anyway, all right. And then you might you know, shift your weight to that side. And this is my tight spot. I will try to rub it around there longer. Breathing through it, make sure there's no pressure in the knee, no pain on the low back. Adjust if you need. Normally I hold this, maybe an extra, what, three mindful breathing cycles this side. So the Badapadmasana has a similar effect to the Mayurasana, yeah, or the peacock position. Good. Yeah, but this one you can hold longer because in the Mayurasana you're doing the arm balance and you might not be able to hold it for a long time. Yeah, and then with the Padmasana legs and then you know, holding the position longer, this is actually more powerful and more, many times, more uh, yeah, electrifying, energizing, and cleansing than the Mayurasana. Huh? Good. All right. And you might lightly lift the head. You might lightly curl back a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, to open the neck region. Beautiful. And uncross and release. And then shake it up. Good. And the Kandasana again. And the Kandasana, hugging to the midline, even if the legs are turning out. Yeah, the inner thigh bones move into the midline. And cross, breathing in, exhale out, you know, away from the stretch, yeah, you know, flow, or just work up and down here to a rocking motion, yeah, you know, a bit of a side to side twist there to fray the legs, yeah, you know. some upper back side stretching too. And V, V Parita Karani. The V Parita Karani, you might open the gaps between your toes, point and flex, and then settle. This is actually the <laughs> culmination of my self-practice. I am self, doing my self-practice. <laughs> At the same time, making tutorials. And then over the head, they fall. You can practice your halasana there. 
creating space, readjusting those legs. And slowly you go and descend. Folding knees and a few circles around. And at the finish of practice, I would do yeah, a round up my favorite restorative technique, the Matsya Kridasana, yeah, to relax the pelvis and then to gently open the spine once more. Yeah. And the other one. Okay, and then flowing sometimes, yeah, the vinyasa. And we can finish with Mastrasana. I've done back bending actually, yeah, but yeah, to finish the practice, I always end with yeah, spine extension. Oh, it feels good, this one. All right, come up. And knees walk. Yeah. Mildly release the side body again. All right. And flowing again one more time. This rubbing around of the femur bone is so inherent for me. So I can really go deep into those inner linings of the hips. Good. And sit. And I'll do my, well, either pranayam. Yeah, I'll actually do my pranayam now after, or the shavasana. Good. What up, Admasana? Yeah, principles and benefits of yeah, physical observances, Manipura Chapura, Kandanadi. Yeah, hopefully you learn a point or two from this lesson. I'll see you in the next one.